call the order around the contribution. to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approval of the minutes. There's a motion. A second. Motion and a second to approve the minutes. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Being none, motion carried. Approval of the bills. Can I add one? Uh, yeah. 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 Yes. Um, we got our bill for audit, for the state audit. audit. Yep, that didn't get um, added to the list. Um, 16000 so if we could add that to the list to be paid. Sixteen thousand? Sixteen thousand. Oh, last year, you remember? It runs the same every year. Same right now. And there is a copy of the audit on our desk. I think we got one minute last minute for paving Ramsey 8, too. Was that on the list? Mm. It was like 800,000, so. Not something no, I was going to say, I missed. Yeah, I was going to say, I missed. No, we haven't seen that one yet. So that would be on the 300 and thousand and change. Yeah, that one on there, too. Unless you want to make a separate motion, that'd be fine. Yeah, it's not on the list of additional bills. Either way, I mean, I can make the ask for motion later. Um, there's some retainage, of course, and they got a little bit of striping to do and rubber strips, strips, a little bit of signing. It's not quite, but it's just about complete. I would say 90%. Try to do it in here. Okay. I move to approve the bill with the addition of the state on the bill. Second. Motion and second. <clears throat> Roll call, please. Brown? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Approval of financial reports. Candy. Okay. Yes. Seeing, now we're even seeing new and newer veterans coming through. 
We've got a uh, young gentleman who's moving from San Antonio back home to Devil's Lake, showed up yesterday. Uh, we've got a gentleman camping out at, uh, uh, at the Cove from Florida. He comes up here for the summer for fishing, and he's in the middle of issues down in Florida that we're trying to work between. So it, it's uh, thrown a lot more wrinkles into the, to the job than what I was uh, ever dealt with in the past. So it's still remaining busy. Yesterday I had 12 people in. So we're just jumping with stuff. So that's, uh, that's about all I got right now. Uh, don't want to be away from the office too long. How is Benson and Nelson? We're seeing, we're still seeing, uh, in Benson's case, more veterans are coming to Devil's Lake to be seen. A lot of it has to do with the ability or the handicap accessibility of the front door here. Where, you know, I don't know if you've ever been to the Benson County Courthouse, it's a hell of a thing to get into for older or handicapped people. Uh, and I've had that comment over there quite often. Uh, Nelson, on the other hand, I'm getting uh, probably an even mix uh, coming both places. So uh, we're, we're actually, since we've made this arrangement with three counties, Nelson is uh, business is picked up. And I don't know if it's because they want to come to Devil's Lake or, but we're still seeing them in both places. So it, uh, it's a little busier than it had been for the last couple of years, but uh, not like it had was, you know, five, six years ago. How are the clinic doing out there? Pretty good? Uh, damn good. Uh, doctor's showing up more. His presence is needed more often. Uh, the numbers uh, steadily increase. Uh, I have seen fewer applications coming through this office to get into there but it's because I think they're they're already uh, being accepted and uh, they had their stuff for, was put together and ready to go before so uh, it's still busy they're, they're working further into the afternoons now and seeing patients further into the afternoons where in the past it was mornings only so it, uh, it's it's all good uh, going with the clinic Any other questions? Okay. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Kristen, good morning. Uh, last week, Wednesday, we had our Northeast Regional Emergency Management meeting. We try to do one meeting quarterly. Um, and there we discussed um, a variety of things, but one of the things that we're looking to do is apply for a grant um, for training and exercise purposes and do a regional collaborative exercise. Um, and I have a meeting tomorrow, which is our local um, LEPC meeting, um, to discuss more details on that with our responders here in order to get everybody on the same page. Um, and I do invite all of you to that if you would like to come. It's at 11 a.m. tomorrow morning in my office. Um, also going on, there is an, uh, an exercise with the National Guard um, different than the one that was supposed to happen more towards the end of this month. Um, the National Guard has contracted a company out of Colorado, and it's a two-part, two-day exercise that started yesterday and today, so I will be heading up to that later this morning. Also, we have a Skywarn class um, taught by the National Weather Service by Greg Gust. That will be Wednesday at 6 p.m. at the City Fire Department. If anybody's interested, it's open and free to the public. Our new grant guidance for our EMPG just came out, so I'll be starting on that for the new fiscal year that will start next month. Um, getting everything set for that. Otherwise, keeping busy um, with um, new grants that came out, um, different meetings, exercises, collaborative efforts. Yeah. That's, that's, that's kind of one class is tomorrow night? It's Thursday night. Thursday night. Thursday night, 6 p.m. Um, there's no cost. Uh, anybody's welcome. Mm -hmm. We try to do one year every year, or every other year. It just kind of depends on the demand of what the public wants. So we did one last year, a year and a half ago. It's been about 18 months. So, yeah. Any other questions for Kristen? All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Roger something. Uh, we did get another estimate for the memorial building from LaFountain Masonry, and I believe all of you got sheets on them. 
Uh, I did get a hold of the um, historic buildings in Bismarck, Amy Monson, and she said we wouldn't be able to receive any funding for at least two years. So, um, and I just talked to Carter Tuck Pointing this morning about if they would be able to do the project this summer if they got the, uh, got the job, and they said more than likely not. But LaFont and Masonary, when they were here, said they would be able to do it this summer. So, and LaFontaine is uh, a little bit less than Carr. Uh, the, the contacts uh, that LaFontaine gave me for um, previous jobs all said they did good work for them. So, is that you? Is that with Carr, you said? It? Carr. Couldn't get, yeah. They, if they said this late in the year, they probably wouldn't get up here. And there's why I won't, right? Yes. Where were some of the jobs they did? Car? Any local? Oh, yeah. The memorial being about 15, 20 years ago. And I know they did uh, several buildings around town when they were here back then. Roger, is that about how often that has to be done? It's about every 15 years? Well, ago? you know, no, because uh, the reason we got a problem now is uh, bell tile up on top, the, the mortar had come out of there and Water is leaking in and running down inside the brook. Now on the east, west, and south sides, we don't have those tile and those brick. That's all good shape. Okay. So just for some reason, um, why they even have those tile on top of that building like that, just in that one area or just on the north side, I don't know. But that was what caused the problem. They said. What are they going to do to correct that then? Well, they'll call that all back in again. On the top, to keep the water from getting in up there. What do these tiles do? Do you know? <sighs> Darn it, I know. They're a decorative feature. I don't know. Decorative? Yeah, that's what, you said. that's what I said. I really couldn't tell you why they're there. Because the rest of the cap has what? Steel on it? Something like that? What now? There's the rest of the cap around the edge has steel on it, doesn't it? Like just over the, like the pillar points? I remember looking there, at those pictures last Yeah, but there is no steel caps, but they will put them on okay. now. I suppose we ought to get it done so that water damage doesn't make things worse, right? I think the sooner the better. Looking at it this morning, there's bricks that, you know, we have have one fall out and hit somebody or hit a vehicle or something like that. So I moved to go ahead and approve the... I have one more question. Bob, did you have some record uh, jobs that they've done in the area? Um, the, I did not, well, jobs that uh, he has done for other people. Um, he's worked with Wade Shively, WTS Construction, uh, who is from town here, and he said he'd done good work for them. And uh, at the Minot Air Force Base, he had done brickwork up there, and I just talked to Andy Hinton was the name and this morning, and he said, yeah, he did good work. And the same with the uh, homeowner in Minot. Like I said, those three contacts that he gave me, they all said he did a good job for them. So. And then you say they're currently working on a bank? In yeah, they're working on a bank in Rugby right now. I don't know it's what exactly it is, but. What was Carr's estimate again? 45. Almost forty six. It's almost thirty four hundred dollars in difference. Is there such a thing to carry as being over twenty five thousand dollars that we have to bid it with projected cost of the project? I don't know if there is. I can think that changed to a hundred, but it might I be worth looking at that. Yeah, it's a hundred. We don't have to officially. It's a hundred? It just changed. Are we sure? Yeah. It was 50 before. Yeah, it was 50 before. It's, uh, yeah. It was 50 before, and then it changed to 100. But I don't think that takes effect until August 1st. Right there. Most new laws go into effect August 1st unless they have an emergency clause in the measure. So it was 50 before, and now it's moving up to 100. That's what you're thinking. I think it already has moved up to 100. Well, it was just passed, it was going to be Oh, just the August. August? Oh, okay. We're comfortable with 
content. I mean, no. I think it's a lot of money, but apparently no, that's... I mean, we're already one head dating to get it out, putting through the big process. Oh, well. That's what I'm concerned I see. about. Um, well, like I said, I know I've talked to Lonnie before, and it was 50000 before, so we're underneath that right. number. I think with the parking lot, we were, we didn't, God, did we get official bids on that? No, we must have. I think that was yes, 90000 I don't remember. We had Yeah, we had those bids on But anyway. We're comfortable, I'm okay. I move to accept the bid from a Houghton Masonry to do the tuck pointing on the memorial building. I'll second that. A motion in a second. Do you have an end date on it? An end date? I do not have an end date. I asked them when they were here if they could get it done this summer, and they said yes. Good. You were going to sign a contract with them? Uh, I suppose we could. Right, Kevin? It's best, yes. Even if you make it towards the end of the summer. Right. At least, mm -hmm. at least there's a break. You use the last gift until October. Yeah, but yeah, October is the first one. There's a motion in a second. Roll call, please. Thanks, Tom. Aye. Brown? Aye. Wait. Aye. Chris? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Motion carries. Another information for us. That's it. Thank you, Roger. Thank you. Thanks. Kevin. Yes. All right. First off, we'll update on the projects that are paving on Rams County Line. Our eight, excuse me, is the paving pretty much done. Uh, maybe you can uh, uh, yeah, paving went real well. Um, they got just a touch over plan on the asphalt, but the asphalt demand was a little bit lower. There's a little bit of that there's a little bit of the contractor's mix because I mean, that's a little bit extra in there. Um, so, overall, the project should have about $100,000 under run. Um, we got about $80,000 worth of work left, including 60 in the retainage, and then there's about 10000 worth of signing. And, Rumble strips and about uh, 12 of striping. So it's pretty much done, except for a little, little bit of striping and rumble strips. Just to make sure I heard you correctly, you said a hundred thousand dollar under run, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, about that. There's 80 left to go, and we're two two eighteen unders, so they're, they're doing the striping today. After the day, all of you have to do the signs. Any more questions on that project? And then we might as well do the bill. The, the invoice was uh, for this estimate, third estimate, was eight hundred seventeen thousand nine hundred ninety-six dollars and sixty-one cents. That's pretty much all the paving that was done. That's for night. Yeah. Uh, no, it's for mail mail construction. Move to approve. Second. There's a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Chris? Aye. Lifeline? Aye. Wakefield? Aye. Brown? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Motion carried. Could you give me that amount again, Kevin? 817. 996.61. I don't know if you guys had a chance to drive it, but it's a nice drive. Yeah, it's a really nice drive. All right, moving on. Uh, we opened the bids for the basement that we tore down, the house we tore down, and we see them listed there. Close was 3300 NCZ Express out of New Rockford, 4090. We're going to excavate here in town, 5493, and an outfit. 626 construction out of Willis County was 21490. And when close put in the bid, he also included $199 to remove and bury the sidewalk, which was 
which I honestly missed. I didn't even see it there. It wasn't really a sidewalk. It was a concrete slab that they poured around the foundation. It must have been water coming in the foundation, so they poured a slab all the way around, and I missed that. So anyway, I'm looking for a motion to accept a low bid for that project. So close. Second. Just one question. It looks good. Looks real good. Yeah. There's a motion and a second. Mm -hmm. How much was the close bid again? Uh, Thirty-three, three thousand three hundred, and then for another hundred ninety-nine dollars, you would bury the side out. That's thirty-five hundred total. Yep, thirty-four ninety-nine. Yes. Thank you. There's a motion and a second. <clears throat> All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Both same sign. Is it all enough? Can I have a roll call? Yeah. Five one? Aye. Chris? Aye. Wakefield? Aye. Brown? Aye. Olson? Aye. Motion carried. Okay. And the next item, I, I received some grants for road signs. Actually, it was just the sheeting for the road signs, not the other one. But the grant, uh, I can get the diamond grade, which is the best grade they make now, sheeting, for one grade lower in price. We need to order $3,800 of sheeting, and that should last us probably four or five years with that order. So I'd like to motion to spend that $3,800 for sheeting for signs. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. So that's one question. I could resheet the signs in that. Yeah, as long as they're not shot up full of holes, you know, as long as the aluminum's in good shape, we got to clean them up real good, make sure there's no oil or residue. But it's a third of the cost. The new sheeting is a third of the cost. And it brings the reflectivity and all that back then. Yeah, yeah, the new sheeting is the reflecting part. Yep. Yeah. Well, you'll notice them. It's quite a difference. Yeah, we we'll have to give a few of them that need it. So. Right. Where's the grants from? 3M.
since it burned up or whatever, is that's a water got away from the side of the road that yeah, probably happened. Huh? Water got away from the road? Yeah, I don't think it was a water issue. I don't, I don't know what was going on. Yeah, water didn't matter. We're not any bigger than that. They're smaller in the center of that area of that road today, but just uh, there's two little spots on there. There was no running going on anywhere yeah. else or anything like that. But you know, we we talked about uh, viewing this after we took those load limits off. So that, that's what I observed it was just those two little areas. Were they there a year ago? They were there a year ago, and they just got worse. So something that needs to be addressed. Okay, yeah, one of them for sure mm -hmm. needs to be addressed, and we'll, and we'll get on that. We're going to put up a small patch in there. Like I said, it won't be any bigger than that little spot. Yeah, they're they're pretty small compared to the average draft. Yeah, it's three and a half miles long. You know. Yeah, they're not dead. I've never seen them, but I didn't realize I thought it was just a softness of the road rather than the spring. It could have been, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I know that area has got a lot of water laying up next to it, or it had a lot of water when they built the road. Yeah. So I just assumed once the water got away, it would dry itself out. And I think that's what's happened. But now there's still some damage to that. Yeah. There's not much water in that ditch there, but you know, it's, I'm sure that uh, the water goes through there. Yep. It does. East and west. Yep. Yeah. What year was that paint? 10. 10. 10. 2010? It started in 2009. And we came to the next year. Yeah, I think it was 10. We're, we're, we're kind of wondering right now where we're going to have soft spots anyway because that's been paid for that long, really. Right. It's not like 2023 where you know all the spots are going to be every spring where they come out, you know. Well, I'm just going to see a lot more traffic when you get the other end paid. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so. When's that scheduled to be done? Do you have any idea? It will be done this summer. It is. It's, it's already did. We're like waiting to project a road build project. Now you've got the whole project. It's all for the bridge to. Well, so the bridge is already paid. No. Down the road. Three miles. Yeah. Oh, Four miles south of Black Tiger. Oh, Black Tiger. Oh, two miles south of Black Tiger. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say it's paved all the way down to like the East Bay Road. Yeah, that wall is going to go all the way. Well, yeah, then it's going to be used quite a bit because it'll be cut off. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They did a nice job of that <laughs> intersection <laughs> down there on 20. Yeah. It's, yeah. So it's a pretty high road. I don't know what they're going to do with that way. They're not good. Yeah. Got rid of the cur the curves are better than they were. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're supposed to pay it. Never die pits there, I suppose. Yeah. The thought was to let it sit over the winter, and then that was that was the idea to begin with. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple of other things to do. So the right thing to do. Yeah. Uh, so I guess now. We all did a striving kind of a struggle thing that we decided to go ahead and fill that basement in. So Bill had or close had put in a bill for that for $2,499 and I just need a motion to pay that along with the rest of the bills. So we didn't do that? No. no we just accepted a little bit. Second. Ms. Morrison and second roll call, please. Yeah. Aye. Big field. Aye. 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 Brown. Aye. Yes. All right, motion carried. And the last thing I have is just a discussion on the headwater on 14th Street, Northeast Travel Road that goes out to the terminal station. Uh, I guess I don't, uh, maybe you wanted to talk about that, Mike. I was just under the impression that a year ago or whatever we discussed it, but upon Candy looking, there was never any vote. I thought we had kind of discussed that we were just going to take care of that road until after the VIDOT construction was complete just to keep the dust down. Uh, they definitely need that kind of stuff on it to keep the dust down for we get a lot of traffic on the yeah, Traffic's picking up now especially since everybody's getting accustomed to the VIDOT. Yeah, I mean you still can go under the VIDOT but I'm going around now. Well, you, you know, we, we talked about that dewatering issue through there, too. That's an affordable spot through that low area. Yeah, well, that, that's pretty much fixed. You know, it, it's not in bad shape now. Has the water gone off? Oh, the water's all gone. Yeah. 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 The water's away from the road. Yeah. Yeah, there may be, what, 
five foot wide little piece by the river yeah, three, 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 four inches deep yeah. on the yeah. side of the yeah. side. That's a very, this spring it was a pretty tough, tough spot. In some, some, something went down there. I got a sneaky suspicion it was a semi going to the grain elevator. Because I went down once in the morning and I came back about 15 minutes later and it was totaled. So somebody said that it was a, a vehicle from Dakota Tree Service, but I never saw the vehicle in there. But it was earlier than that. Yeah, yeah it was heavy. Just, just yeah. guessing. Yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was pretty tore up after. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a township road? It is. It is. Yeah. Is it a perimeter road or not? It is. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna yes. start paying for. Hey, water on the. How much money are we talking about? Do you think, Kevin? Uh, approximately. Roughly five to six thousand. And that would do the whole road from the end of the pavement all the way down to the beginning of the pavement. Yeah, the intersection. Pavement to pavement. Okay. Yeah. And then we pay twenty-five percent the the lot owners. Yeah. There was even a couple there that that didn't that the rest of us added up to cover. Well, I'm, I'm kind of in favor of doing it because of the fact of the traffic relocating that way, but I think we should put a vehicle call on there. Oh, yeah. Can you put the one on there? No. No. Well, it's a year old or whatever. But I think we should do one now. <coughs> Come on. Oh, since the biotech issue. Yeah. We're really good. We have a figure then. <coughs> we'll be good at you to do it when we're going to shut down zone 20. Mm. Maybe yeah, you can get some more than the bridge up or the overpass, underpass. Yeah. 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 I, I, yeah. Would, I would do one now when it's open and do one now or then. Mm -hmm. What about the truck route? Is that getting a lot of traffic? Yeah. Well, it's not getting a lot of traffic. It's not getting a lot of traffic. It's not getting a lot of traffic. It might now with the, uh, there's a lot of grain trucks still going through the viaduct. There is. Yeah. They won't use that truck. Well, it might be going the other way. They're yeah, probably going south on 20. Yeah, probably going that way. Yeah. Like the Tronson trucks, whatever. I mean, uh, I'm not picking on anybody, but they got to go that way, right. so. Yeah, they're going all the way down there too, wouldn't they? Right. And the traffic's been flowing through there pretty well. If they're going straight south, there's no reason for them not to, right? Yeah, actually, the traffic on the ride has been pretty good so far up to this point. At least. And it's slow, but it's like a half hour in the morning, we're back up. So yeah, it's been flowing pretty well, actually. I've been kind of surprised. Have you heard when they're going to close it? Uh, yeah, I think it depends on what phase of the project they're doing. Like when they start tearing that bridge down, that they'll close it. Then. Yeah. I suppose they're probably going to have to close when they put the temporary railroad bridge up, too. Because they're pounding all those pilings, and once they start putting the bridge up, they're going to have to close it. So it'll depend on what phase the project's in when they close it. Yeah. After the last week we meeting, they talked about doing about a six-day closure while they pump the, the other set of pilings to be in the road for the winter. And then they'll have you know, a few other short ones for setting the beams and stuff. <laughs> Kevin, you think it'd be a good idea for you to go to their updates like weekly or bi weekly? Like, yeah. And see what what gas is. Yeah, so I don't know when they are. Thursday mornings at 9. Okay. What are they called? Thursday mornings at 9 they're at the, um, where the, in the real estate for you building. Oh, all right, that's far. For, um, Peter's, what else? Peter's Peter's still Peter's still Peter's okay. Yeah, that, it's, is that what their office is? Contractor? Yeah. They've got a office in there. But I think it'd be a good idea to go there and see what, yeah. what's projected in the next six months or next month or next week. I'm thinking like a three week look ahead schedule. I mean, I can or post you. Yeah, that'd be good. Or you can get on their email list. Yeah. I guess I know what it means every game. Yeah. 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 I think that would help. The time is on. Yeah, just keep it blindsided or something. Or, you know, right. Or something. Mm -hmm. Well, it might give us a heads up too when we know the traffic's going to get diverted. Because then, if, if we know, you know, it's going to get pushed to 14 through the truck route, we'll know maybe to get the blades on there a little bit more, or a little more often, or whatever, just try to keep the roads in shape. And there's going to be more traffic being pushed that way. So. I think the stuff within the next year or so is going to be, well, the next few months, I guess, will be short closures, and then yeah. 
next year. They're, the total of all the players, I think, is something like 78. They can have a close with them. I think that would be to get the new concrete paving done and all that. I'll make the motion to uh, put in their capital down on 14th Street properties. I'd second that. There's a motion. I'd second. There's a couple other townships here. Did you guys want to comment on that, or do you have something else you want to bring up today? <laughs> We got something else to bring. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I said the question of, I mean, we've talked about this multiple times, obviously, but it's at some point in time when the perimeter roads agreement states it's the township's responsibility and the traffic's being pushed from the city, why is it our responsibility to pay for it? That's my question. And it's something we talk about over and over, and then we come back to the point of we'll pay for it because we don't want the road to go to pot. Well, yeah, but. It clearly is a township responsibility in the Port of the Roads Agreement. Is that just updated? Yeah, we just updated that last year and re-signed it. I mean, at some point in time, we can't we can't keep bailing up the township when it's their responsibility. And I'm not trying to be harsh to the township. I mean, we don't want the road to go to pot either. But that's kind of where we've always come down to. The township won't pay, so then we say, well, we don't want the road to go to pot. Well, so then we just do it. Well. At some point, if you set that precedent, isn't every township going to walk in and say, well, you're caving for them, why don't you do this for us? Well, I see what you're saying. I, 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 that, that's, I understand this is a different situation I, since I, I it's the construction. Here, I, no, I, 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 about, you know, I went down the truck route the other day and it was quite messy. And, and I, I just had a pickup. But I just feel a lot of chemicals thrown out on this road. But, yeah. Drew Johnson's there, you know. That yeah, he looks good. Well, one thing about Johnson's that everybody should know is when we bought right away from him, we gave him enough money to put that chemical down himself for two years, and this is the second year, so he's doing that himself this year and last year. And we, we gave him money through the right away to do that. I don't want to answer on your question, Adam, but no. I, I mean, I, I'm not on a long-term project with this at all. I mean, this year, next year, boy, then it's going to have to be the township involved for sure. Maybe, oh, no, maybe yeah. we want them to take half of it this year. Well, that's, that's <coughs> my only thing is I don't have a problem with putting it down, but maybe we need to talk to the township and say, hey, you guys got to pull me up something here because mm -hmm. we can't just put the whole bill ourselves when it's clearly their responsibility in the perimeter roads agreement. Is this for dust control on 14th you're talking about? Yeah, plus it'll help the road pull together a little bit better with that main water. It, it does help, I mean. It helps big time. It helps a lot. I mean, in, in my opinion, I, I guess if, if it was my brother's, like, we'd put it all kinds of places. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, if, if we had a choice, I'd like to do like some kind of a cash share program where maybe anybody that lives on a county road or something that, you know, would have the ability to cost share with us. We do. Yeah. We do. That. Yeah, continue to do it. I mean, it's just. What is that, 25 75 Is that what it is? Yeah, we pay 75 Yeah. Well, let's try to get 25 out of them. Who wants to approach the town? Adam? <laughs> well, the, the, lower, yeah. the homeowners do 25 also, so. Yeah. You know, and Canada's running, but they've got lots of money. That township. You want to approach them? Well, I mean, oh, absolutely. I'll, uh, okay. I mean, at the end of the well, day, it's. it's Taxpayers are all paying regardless, I realize that, but essentially at some point in time when you come up with an agreement, you sign an agreement, and the agreement states this is your responsibility, essentially somebody that lives in Noonan Township or Newland Township is paying for May water in a township that they're supposed to be responsible for it. I mean, and, and I, I understand, like I said, this is a different situation since it's a construction thing and we don't want the road to go to hell on us. But... But, you know, I agree at some point in time we're just going to have to cut the cord and say you guys are going to have to either take care of it or, I, I don't know. I think from the condition on my motion and say, make the motion with the, the Kevin approaching the township to pay their 25%. Yeah, I mean, if, if we could at least get a cost share on it, just, I mean, it, and we're talking about, you know, yeah, 3500 bucks, yeah. I realize. But, 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 but it's just the principle of it, you know. I mean, if I they mean, didn't want the responsibility of the road, then that should have been hammered out when we did the front of the road screen. I agree with you there too, but there's quite a safety issue. No, I agree. And that's that's kind of where we always come back to it is it's a safety issue. We don't want the road going to heck on us, so we, we take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long, yeah. Yeah. Probably already a lot.
picked up. Yeah. It was kind of slim there for a while. <laughs> the ruts in there. Yeah. People stayed off. <clears throat> yeah. No, so I, I would just say, I mean, it, let's approach the township. Let's see if they'll pay their fair share on it. And if not, I mean, we're just going to probably have to do it anyway. But, I mean, I mean we don't have a... When we're making the motion to pay for it. I mean, we really don't have much of a much of a position to work from. I realize that, but you want to cover your back, Kevin. But did we do good enough there? And, you know, we have enough support to get this agreement with the township. Did the commission? Did they? Did you guys? Hey, you know, see what they say. I guess. <laughs> um, I mean, you've you essentially approached them in the past on this. I have, and they've always said no. No, they don't do it. You know, there's. Other areas in the township that actually do put the bank water down on the township roads and they don't pay for any of it. So. But they agreed to the Bermuda uh, Road Agreement then? Did the okay. township agree? Okay. okay, they signed it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then they get 25% of the bill. That, that's fair. Yeah, I do, I think 50% of the bill is fair. Yeah. Okay. So we're we're looking at so they have the Bermuda Township? Fair. Maybe? Yeah, they got rid of the truck route. They were jumping up and down. Yeah, that's and, and that was the problem we had before, is they were getting rid of roads and then taking responsibility of these roads, right. and then they were still not willing to okay. ante up that money to take care of it. That way. And they should pass out the quarter car, 25%. So just so I understand, the homeowners do 25, and the township does 25, and we're doing 50, right? Is that the way I get it? I heard it was 75 25. Before County gets 75, and. Well, then the one get 25. They do? Yeah, man. Landowners have been getting up 25% at yep. yep. this point. But isn't there a stretch in there from the from the trailer court to where that first house is right south of Marks or east of Marks where there's no homeowners? Uh -huh. No, right. but we, the rest of the homeowners have taken that 25% and divvied it up along the but that's never been made water. Before. Yes, sir. Yeah, has it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought it was just up to that last house there. Oh. There's actually, I think, one. No, then this year there's going to be two houses out there that that won't go on the program. But the rest of us will we'll ante up to cover their half. Well, I wouldn't go on it either if somebody else was paying my bill for me. <laughs> and that's my argument. Right. <laughs> exactly. So that's been my argument the whole time. You saw what the coach should have yeah. yes. <laughs> that, That's the point. At some point, if you, if you just say, well, we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> yeah. You know? So is your motion amended to include sending an invoice to the township for 25% of the cost of the project? Yes. Or well, yeah. send 25% to the loan owner. Right. I'll second that. We'll follow the rules that have been set by the Premier Road Committee. There is a motion and a second to approve Magwater on 14th Street North East. Let's have a roll call. Mike Hong? Aye. Drip? Aye. Wakefield? Aye. Brown? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Motion carried. Call ahead. Well, that was enough. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh. I'm just figuring out a per hour basis because that's no because we're gonna have to extrapolate where we're gonna go. So if you use that top number of of fifty one ninety eight take it times twelve, you get sixty two three seventy six plus full days. And then you take that divide that by a couple thousand hours because that would be what you would work at forty hours a week over fifty. You get thirty one dollars and nineteen cents an hour. And since we're not going to be kicking in any benefits, you know, you're probably going to have to maybe jump that wage slightly, obviously, even though it's a part time thing. So that would kind of put us in where if we wanted to find a dollar figure, you know, what we could afford to have somebody here, basically, if that's what if that's the route we're looking for. Where do you want to buy? Yeah, you'd be looking at, like, if you're paying on a per hour basis and you wanted to do, say, I don't know how much, what we'd be looking at, but. We're using the top of the salary. Yeah, I'm just, I'm starting high and working. What does it say in a nutshell? Very much. In a nutshell, it um, does we make responsibilities for the position. It sets a baseline minimum qualification for that for type of person. Um, and preferred qualification would like have that specific program to work in those. I think probably the most important part of any type of a job description is the minimum qualifications because that sets the tone for the type of skill set you want to bring on board. And they have a combination, they have the bachelor's, you know, they have the bachelor's degree in certain fields, and then they have um, closely related and then professional experience, those skills, education and experience kind of combination you could go with. Well, I think the minimum qualifications listed here are pretty well in line with what we'd be looking for. At least in my opinion. Well, they are. I mean, if you want an HR trained person, you want an HR trained person. Or you want a person that you train to be an HR trained person. Well, I mean, you look at taking on somebody that you've got to train completely, and that that's the best investment as well. So. I talked to Rhonda up in social service, and they don't need. HR. And is that, that be, is that because they um, are going to see? No. Do they get their HR needs? No, or I'm going to handle it herself. Hmm. And she said maybe. Maybe an hour a year. That's the figure she threw at me. She, you I about have not visited with her before. No. An hour a year. I think it would be interesting to hear from all the department heads. I think they're that very interesting. Because. You want to ensure that you're in compliance with all sorts of different laws and hiring and discipline and um, other issues that come up. So it would be, um, I think, beneficial to have a weigh in from all the department heads. I did a little candy and I don't think you have a problem sharing that conversation we had. Her idea was two days a month. I think that's that'd be a good starting point. I was just figuring, you know, say like a day a week, just off of these figures. Now that we have something, if you figure a day a week, so eight hours in that day, uh, that'd be eight hours times you know fifty weeks a year, because you give or take, that'd be at thirty bucks an hour, which is the top of the scaler, and that should be twelve thousand bucks a year. Then plus you'd be paying, you know, uh, you know, you have to pay your fight to pay payroll and all that kind of stuff out of it. But we could get into a ballpark figure where we could do something with that. And then, you know, I think that's that's well within our capabilities of handling. And a day a week isn't bad. Or maybe if you wanted to go two, three days a month, that'd be fine too. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be a, a good place to start. And I don't know, 30 bucks an hour is going to do it for somebody that's coming in for a day a week or whatnot. But I think at least we're in the ballpark of that. We have 14,000 budgeted now. That'll get us through this year. And then next year, if we have to bump it just a little bit or whatever to make it work, I think we can make it and we'll actually have a little bit of help what we're looking for then. Mm -hmm. I think, good. you know, like I said earlier in meetings, that, you know, we have a different situation in the city. Mm -hmm. If you want to talk to city, you know, police chief, if you want to talk to sheriff, the sheriff's elected. You know, let's say, for instance, he has a deputy that's giving him a bad time or doing something wrong. and. Uh, that's really not our problem. That's his problem. To a point, 
To a point. To a point, but I mean, the deputy is, still our, the deputy is still our staff. But. Right. So if, if the sheriff said he had a problem and he wanted the deputy to talk to HR, then that's where we would, you know, he could use it as a resource. Okay. That's kind of how I envision it. It's, it's going to be, you know, and it's, if it's a, a day a week or a couple days a month or whatever you're going to use it for, it would just be that resource there. Right. And the impartial mediator yeah. to, to solve problems as they arise. And, and yeah, a couple days a month you could handle, and then, you know, on call basically, yeah. whenever we do hiring or whatever, but it would be that person where you could give them a haul or you could give them a call, you could say, you know, I got a problem, I got a question. You know, it, it's it's not too much work, but it, 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 you can fit it within our budget at this number, which is promising. And Kevin, how many people you got in your department? Uh, with me, 12. 12. And you've pretty much done it yourself. Pretty much. The only, the only thing that, when an issue comes up where I say I'm the problem, or uh, say one of my employees has a problem with me, and he can't come to me, that's when he needs somebody. Uh, just right. thinking outside the box. Right. Yeah. And, I've, and I've spoken to uh, about four department heads about this. It seems, at least in my perspective, that it's pretty universally uh, thought to be a good idea. Uh, that, that it seems like among all the department heads that I've talked to, none of them express any kind of opposition to having at least a part-time HR person to, to, to work. And, and the one thing that was reiterated to me over and over and over again by almost every department that I talked to was that they were not interested in having it be somebody adding another hat to the hats that they wear in this, in this uh, courthouse. And I think that that's very appropriate because you know, it's, it's really hard to expect somebody to come and report an HR issue if they have a problem with somebody, if they have to come to them and say, okay, I need you to not wear your auditor hat or your treasurer hat or your, your uh, whatever hat. Now I need to talk to you as an HR person. No, you can't expect somebody to do that. <laughs> and, and also thinking outside the box, if, if we had a big issue come up, uh, this person might have to spend more time than, say, three, four days a week working on that issue. It rarely would happen, but it, you know, you have to think of that too. It's a smart investment. I mean, speaking as a department head, it's a smart investment because, for example, if I routinely let my employees use their car to go to the law enforcement center to pick up my stuff and they get in an accident, how liable are we as a county? I mean, it's those things that pop up that you don't think about your day-to-day -day type of work that somebody with HR can at least set a roadmap. These are the areas you want to avoid. These are the areas that you be mindful of. Yeah, you want to definitely have an HR person that's very aware of the North Dakota Open and record and media law. Right, which has some new changes. <coughs> FMLA. Well, yeah. well FMLA, true. and there's a timeline because it's within like three it's days, true. and then you've got to send out all the paperwork to your employees. Yeah. That, I just like the idea too of having somebody, like I've said in the past, that can basically once a year do a check on all of our all of our employee files, make sure everything's in order, and make sure that we have all of our reviews done and everything's where it's supposed to be and everything's set up so that if we ever do have a problem, we're not going, well, where's this and where's that and what's going on. And, and you know, you hope you never have a problem, but inevitably, you know, you're going to run into something at some point in time. And I think as a county, and I, I said this before at the last meeting, uh, as a county, I think our resources are better served stopping small fires becoming large fires than trying to fight wildfires. Yeah. You know, yeah. And that's why I brought this up in the first place. <laughs> Way back when. We've been talking about it for a while. So. Yeah, we've even been run by fewer bands, you know, and we just didn't know what direction to do. I hope we can find some way to fill our needs here. Well, I, think I don't know if it's out there. But. To, to <coughs> that end, I think that today we ought to discuss what it would look like if we were going to try to find someone for this position, this hypothetical position we're talking about. So if we were to advertise for that, uh, what would that process look like? Well, we better get in how much time it's going to take or how much time do we want for that. Well, I, I like Adam's idea of a day a week. I think that's very appropriate. I mean, I, I, I was just throwing that out from a... It's easy to do the math for me. But that kind of, like I said, it gets us in the ballpark that that would be $12,000 a year, and then you could, you know, I don't know, spike a payroll once you get all that back to the end of another year. 15%, something like that. So that'd be $1,500, give or take, plus 
plus a little bit, so 1750. So that puts you right at around 14, 15,000 bucks. Well, and, then, and then if an issue arises, say the day after the HR person comes in, two weeks is, is a fair bit of time to wait to let an issue fester. So I like the idea of once a week just because if you have some kind of uh, interpersonal issue, that it can be addressed in a timely manner because this, this courthouse only functions when people can talk to each other. And if we're not giving everybody every ability to have good discussions with each other, then we're doing this county a disservice. Well, I mean, when, when we write the job description, I would like to see that we write it basically so it would be like, you know, whatever the agreed upon set dates would be, but also with the ability to have you in more as necessary, you know, in those situations. If there's a, a problem where you need to be here a little bit more often, and, or, you know, if we're going to go through a hiring situation, you know, you know, work with that individual to have them in when we, you know, do a hiring situation or whatever that, uh, that would be. That would have to be under the, the summary of work and the classification, you know. Uh, I mean, this is a pretty good list to start with, though, in terms of what we're doing. I mean, I guess my, my thought process would be we, we take something like this as a template, go through it, hack it down to what we think we need as, as job description, work summary, things of that nature put it back together again, and that would be our, our setup for what we go out and start looking for somebody to hire. Set of dollars per hour, set of parameters for how much we want in the building, and, and move forward. But it's going to, you know, we're going to have to hack through this a little bit probably on our own time to get it knocked out, I would guess, and maybe touch, it, touch base on it in the second meeting in June again. It's a pretty good start, though. And where would we have workspace available for this person? <laughs> Get closer up here. <laughs> well, you got additional desk in your office, correct? Yeah. We can just, I mean, it's not going to be used all the time, so mm -hmm. we'll just put it down there and get a week or whatever. That'd be fine. Let me just go to the privacy part of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you've got the well, side rooms and stuff here, like that you can use as here. well. So. Yes. Mm -hmm. What is used in the blue building? Tough one to get started. <laughs> <laughs> Sit next to the chemical. Mm. Yeah, there's an office and then there's a shop in there, isn't it? We could use the front office. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I would also like this to be a sit in the chair job for eight hours a day. In the building. In the building, yeah. in your office one day a week. And, yep. Then, yep. and then basically the description would be written. So yep. if we have a situation where you need to be here more often, yep. at the discretion of the commission to say, can you come in this week yeah. and be here for these we days? Have, we have, we have a situation. Problem, yeah. 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 Or, you know, we're hiring somebody <clears throat> to be here for interviews next Thursday yeah. for, you know, the three, four hours in the morning or whatever. You know, and that would be at discretion of working with the employee, obviously. But, but I know that was kind of an issue with the last one was. She was supposed to be in, in in the office in a chair, and she wasn't there. So yeah, we have to have somebody that, that that's kind of my whole thought too. Is I want to have somebody here, at least yeah. so that people know. Oh, the insurance person is going to be here every Thursday, Wednesday from eight to five. Yeah. So if you have a problem, the most you have to wait is a week or whatever to yeah. talk to somebody about it. Or if you have a question, or if our department heads are going to have a question, they know I can go talk to them next Thursday about it or whatever for X amount of Gary, you think we should do some more searching or? I think to take this as a template, put it together for what we want, um, review it, and then start looking. So who, and I think the in office is important, set out is important, whether or not they want to do some additional kind of all department wide. Here's the FMLA training, here's the this training, here's the that. Carrie, not to, not to swamp you with work, but is this something that we could empower you to, yes. to set up such that it would be appropriate for Travis County? Yeah, and, and I can play with that template. I can shoot up different types of examples and emails can be, and it should be emailed out. Where do you guys think anyway, put them up the night before? If you want them to be there eight of the 
if you end up with somebody from another town or where you can somebody local for that. I think you throw it out there and ask them. Yeah, I, I think that we won't know until we know as far as what comes in. The closest in. response we get is someone farther away than them.
three people. Um, Starkweather, okay. Camden, Sullivan Township, Stevens Township, and Minnewakan Township. Move with you. Second. There's motion and a second to approve values of townships that provide their own assessor or data collectors whose values are approved by a certified assessor. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. And then motion carried. And then as far as pages 4A, 5A, um, 7A, those are just for your information. Those are um, exemptions or credits that we provide within the office. Um, disabled veterans, uh, homestead credit, property tax credit, that type of thing um, that are out there for the residents. And we just give you a list to let you know that we're offering that and, and who's able to use it. Next, we need to move on to um, the inundated land classification approval. And this is a sign up for the state um, that you approve. You'll see that on page 9A. All of the people that applied have had it in the past. There aren't any new ones, um, no changes for this year as far as that goes. Move to approve. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve inundated land classification. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. And then motion carried. And we'll move into the Soils Committee. The Soils Committee met in April. We have seven producers from different areas of the county that meet and review any um, questions or complaints from residents. We had two this year. Um, it seems like each year there's fewer and fewer currently. Um, it was the same person. And if you note on 10A, um, one of the parcels the, the soil committee is re recommending to not do any change because it was already reduced in a countywide reduction that we did at the beginning. And the other one, they wanted to move two acres to non-productive because it was underwater. And it, so it would be to approve um, their recommendations. Part of those the soils committee recommendations. Second that. A motion and a second to approve soils committee recommendations. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. And motion carried. And last is for agricultural values. That's for you to discuss. Um, if you, we are currently in compliance with the state. We are right around 94 to 95 percent. We have to be within 10 percent. It is my recommendation that we do not make any changes for agricultural land for this year, um, but that is up to you to discuss. This is the same as the one last year? Um, yes, it was, um, the state estimate for 2017 was $633.45. We do have a 10% allowance. Um, we're at 605.29. That leaves us at uh, 95.6%, so we're right in the middle. Second. And a motion and a second for no change in the agricultural values for 2017. Well, one comment is if we don't stay within the 10, the state can come in. And right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 For the same sign being non motion.
followed, I made the changes that the commission requested and what it looks like. Yeah, I think. Is that in our packet? I don't think that makes sense. I think it was Just a couple of minutes here. Approval of state site authorizations. Second. Motion and a second to approve the site authorization. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Being that motion carried. Approval of the two raffle permits. Move to approve. Second. Motion and is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Non motion carried. Approve a special permit for two, three of them. There's a third one. On the desk for Sarah's. Thursdays. Thank you. 
Being 915, Popular Grove and Creole Township discussion on Cold Grove. And it's still about. I handed Jeff a copy of the uh, real outline of the area and how much tax dollars, how many tax dollars it produces. You guys want copies too, though? How many is it, Jeff? He figures he'll sell them all. Well, there's going to be 14 more really nice homes going in there within the next couple of years, two years. And I think the people out there are willing to throw in some money, but we're looking for help. <laughs> You're talking about that development out there in the, the piles. Well, yeah, the Honker Hills. The Honker Hills, yeah. yeah. We've been, we can't. Um, the road in the state it's in, it's just every every year it's um, it's fifteen that on our share. I mean it, it winds up being a thirty thousand, twenty, thirty thousand dollar repair bill. And it just doesn't seem to be going away. I don't think I don't think there's a, unless we strengthen that road somehow, I just think this will go on indefinitely. And since it serves we're looking at the to see if the county would be able to help us out here some in some way to um, Try to make this road better for everyone out here. Okay. This 411 is sales tax then? Is that correct or no? That's just taxable. I think it's property, property tax. tax. That's an actual property tax. Is that what pulled off? Right. Okay. Kevin, do you conduct uh, road counts in the even number of years? Or do you do it in the Okay, so you did one last year, so we did one on this stretch of pavement the previous year, and we started on the Memorial Holiday, and then we finished it up on the Labor Day holiday. You want yeah. that? I've that one. We did one. Nice. Perfect. So back when we did this, on uh, from July 3rd to 121,801 vehicles divided. Divided by two axles per vehicle, so approximately 60,900 vehicles uh, have crossed or used this pavement in the. So you know how many day period, Mark? I thought it was Memorial Day, but I stand corrected. Yeah, be... From July 3rd to September 9th, a total of 67 days is when I is when we did this. It seems like every place we patch, it starts breaking up on the edge of the patch, and then you patch it again, and it just—it's like yeah, like a checkerboard. You know, we just so that's why I think that. Um, and you're using asphalt to patch with. Yeah. Try to see. It. Digging out, putting down fabric. Right. Putting the fabric down to it. Yeah. For a lot of water laying along the edge of the road. No. You know, a lot of. Uh, I think there's a fair amount of black dirt under the road, though. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. Yeah, well, how long was that tape now? I believe it was 1994. Somewhere in there. When it was done the first time. And a two inch overlay, what, 200,000? Well, yeah, it depends on where we. You know, I've gotten some. I've gotten a couple bids over the years, but you, you come in around that. Um, $200,000 mark. How, how long is the road all the way into the where it's paved right now? Well, I think they, the um, all the way when you come off a of 19 and you would go to the curve in the road, so that's where the creel side of it ends. And so that's when I've gotten a bid, that's where I've stopped. But that's 1.4 miles. So that's a little bit more in Poplar. I don't know, maybe another couple tenths maybe? Sure. Yeah, would be a lot more. When you're coming off Highway 19, no. no. When, you, when you're coming off of Highway 19 and going yeah, south, so 1.4. Yep, yeah, all the way until you hit those curves, and then I say it's a couple, probably another couple times past that.
So the road doesn't run on the section line then? Yeah. Well, it does until it hits the lake, and then it turns into become, and then it turns into just. Oh, okay. So, 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 so the, from 19 down to the curb would be half and half. Yeah, half and then yeah. once it turns yeah, that, it's all public road at that point. And that's why that's what. No, I was a bit confused. I thought you meant it was on your side. Yeah, interesting. Right where the trees started. The yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Kevin, what, what do you what do you think as far as what should be done? Is uh, will a uh, will a uh, will this two inch lift? Do you think that'll fix most of the problem? I do for that road. I mean, there's not a lot of truck traffic, just like garbage truck, school bus, uh, pop truck, that type of stuff. But yeah, not a lot of semis, grain trucks. So I think the two inches will be a big boost. You need a two hundred thousand dollar figure pretty close, Kevin. Oh, uh, you had we're like one hundred twenty uh, per mile, so this is a mile and a half. So it, yeah, that's be about two hundred total. So yeah, so one hundred twenty per mile per two inches or per inch? Inch and a half. Inch and a half. Yeah, because that's what we've been looking at. It's an inch and a half. So yeah, two hundred. So yeah, that's two hundred. Right in the ballpark. Okay. Yeah. How do you want to fund it? Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's the magical question. <laughs> maybe, maybe we should ask Candy. <laughs> so, you've got 341 parcels out there, then. right? Under this count? Yeah. yeah. So is that just physical houses, or is that parcels, or is that? Uh, I think that's lots and lots not stolen. Really, yeah. yeah. I mean, most most everything past about this line right here is not inhabited. You know, yeah. anything further south than that, it's it's all washed out. If you want my opinion how it should be funded, it should be special assessed. Uh, and I think, I, think I, I agree with that. Uh, yeah. I'm going to just speak as a resident. Uh, the problem with the special assessment is it's this problem isn't because of people living there. I agree. It's because of tourism. I agree. And I don't think it's fair to punish the people living there because the tourism is growing. And when this road first was established, nobody had the foresight to have any idea that the lake was going to do what it did or that the girls would be coming. And so I don't know that special assessing people that are already paying quite a bit in property taxes is the right thing to do. We have extra mills on top of it, correct? The, what was that? We have extra mills on also. And that's it too. Poplar Grove, I don't know how long it has been going on, but since I've lived here, has an additional three mills over there. Eight. They are, where we have 25 or 27 mills we're paying on the township. That's everybody in Poplar Grove has agreed to do that, voted, and continue to do that to support this road and the other roads. And that's on Tagland. That's people that don't, you know, that farm, that don't live there. So the Pop and Grove has consistently tried their hardest to maintain the road and you know, do the right thing. I understand. This has been an ongoing concern of the people that live there and related to a few of yeah. uh, for, for quite some time. Uh, my understanding is it's kind of difficult to levy a, a special assessment against uh, the, the culprits, as it were, you know, specifically, at least from the legal standpoint that we have to work with. But the point stands that the money has to come from somewhere. So I'm not interested in, in, as you say, penalizing people, but... Unfortunately, the perfect world would be if we could have this, the, what is it called, the lodging tax, or, I don't know, I'll get out of the county. That would require a home rule charter. Right, and so, so our hands are sort of tied so on, on what we're allowed to do, but again, the money has to come so But I do take your point, absolutely. Yeah, Beth makes a good point, and maybe it's such a thing that the business out there would be assessed more proportionally than the homeowners. Uh, well, it would have to be on parcel valuation. It would right. be a percentage of your taxable valuation, or you know, you take the total project cost, and then it would just be parceled out on a percentage, and then you could pay it over a certain amount of years. That's you know, how it works. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, commercial property needs to be worth a lot, too, to do the debts. They don't even know what the commercial property tax out there is on He pays a lot of taxes. And, and, that, and that's true also, right? And that's true also. My question would be is, is it, if you had the option of a special assessment district, how long could you pay it off for? 
what are our options? Could, I mean, so we could make the burden as low as possible, as low as possible on a yearly basis for the people who live there. That was the option that you were taking. I interject as a resident. It was probably 20 years ago we looked at trying to set up a special assessment district, and at the time there were two choices, and it was a linear foot or a square foot of property. And the first three quarters of a mile is the problem because you have the linear feet and the square footage of your property and no real um, no real support for the assessment. Sure. So that's where the problem came from at that time. Well, it's sure. possible to, to define the district in, a, in such a way that that wouldn't necessarily completely negatively affect that land. Because there's, you're right, there's this portion of space there that does not necessarily have the ability to bear. Well, and it all comes down to Century Court, I believe, how you can structure special assessment districts. That's all, that's all, all in your but, but as far as time, you know, is a stipulation, you wouldn't want to assess longer than you'd expect the road to last. No, but... And I think that, that, but I think that that's your... Yeah, yeah. It would just be, you know, because you, you have to pay for everything up front, so then you have, but you have to bond at a certain level, you know, and, and a $200,000 project, I don't know if that's a bondable project, because when, I, you know, when we built the recipe search and rescue building, Elizabeth made it sound as though, you know, you wouldn't want to bond anything under, they won't even bond anything under, what, five, six hundred thousand dollars? Uh, that was what she said. <clears throat> so it'd be tough to get a bond on even to, to stretch the project costs out over a length of time to make it, you know, make it work for everybody. Because I understand, I, I know you guys don't want to get hit with a human bill in one year, and I understand that completely. Are you doing uh, maintenance on that road on an annual basis on those I think I have it on my phone, but roughly it was 2015 we put in 16,000 in the road, and then 2014 we had $20,000 R half. You know, so that we have to double, double it, I guess. So 30 and 40,000 in 16, the estimated repair would be 20,000 total. It didn't get done. Now I'm sure that I can tell because I drive on it every day, and that that number has went up substantially yeah. since then. Kevin, would that would that dollar amount for maintenance be significantly reduced if the project was completed? Yeah, yeah especially the first. Yeah. So I mean, this, so that's that's a consideration also for the townships, right? Is that, that you're going to save yourself some money yeah. on maintenance costs for at least the first few years after the project is done? That would be better. Yeah. That would be the whole village. Right. <laughs> Mary, what do you think? The, what do you group want us to the commission to do? I mean, what do you want, or what are you thinking? Or? We'd like to see Ramsey County take the road over. Yeah. I mean, anything with that high a traffic count, how can a township even try to maintain? Yeah. I mean, we're not funded. Is there guidelines in the Century Code when, when traffic gets to be a high number? Like yeah, what, that would help what, us. What yeah. differentiates the township or a county maintaining a road? Is it is it traffic count that bumps it up to the county takes it over, or is it? It's not yeah. that the state's attorney looked into the century code. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is a traffic council. It's not, that's a good question. <clears throat> I don't know myself. But it is not traffic. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, way back somebody said this is a county road, this is a township road. Right. This is a and I think that's, I think that's honestly, pretty much right. I think that's pretty much what occurred. Yeah. yeah. It was just at some point in time the county, the county has, or at least my understanding of the century code. Maybe I should, my understanding probably is pretty good, but is at some point in time somebody said there's a lot of traffic on that road. It should probably be a county road. <laughs> You know, and it, part of it comes down to collector. Some of it comes down to economic. You know, you know what what's going on on the road. Basically, is it all local traffic? Is it township traffic? Well, or is it, I know, is it a greater good type of thing? Is it you know? The federal government had a lot to do with setting up county. Well, yeah, CMC yeah. road federal miles aid. and federal aid road. Which ones are they going to uh, support? Federal government, and they took Ramsey County and said, okay, we're going to have three year, four year. Seven, eight, nine. That's all they did. And you can tell. And it was not probably a lot of open input. You can tell they're like ten miles apart, mm -hmm. right. roughly. Right. That was all done what back in the sixties. Oh, well, fifties. Yeah. Back in that probably. Yeah, that was fifties, sixties. Well, like not like County Three wasn't paved until sometime in the sixties. What like setting up the map? Setting up the map was probably their oh. previous. Well, it would be in the fifties. Fifties. Then it was up to the county to start distinguishing which ones they should probably upgrade. Right. And they probably got, I'm sure they got federal aid to do that. Yeah. And that's why they're called federal aid roads. 
Rodney, would that have been part of uh, like Eisenhower when when he did the huge transportation overhaul? Is that when that would have happened? I suppose it was, but I know that when like County Four, that was built in 1952 or in '53. So that would that, would that was supposedly be a federal aid road at that time. I mean, I'm just going by. I can remember when that road was built. Yeah. That's how they set them up. You we just didn't after the chain or uh, century code yeah. to figure out, you know, how we, the county was taken over. I, 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 What's the traffic cone on Ramsey County Eight? On Eight? Oh God! East of Webster. The one, you, the one you just did. Yeah. Yeah. Four hundred or something. Eight. Ninety-nine. Quite Ninety-nine. Ninety-nine. When you get farther out, you get. You know, a lot is probably 15 to 20. Check it. Uh, it's the same. 73, it gets the lowest. 97, 73. But very, you know, you got to take into consideration how much federal money followed that project that we just did on it. What do you guess? Is it 80 20 or? Uh, it's 80, 20, but it was like 700,000. About yeah. 700 federal money. And the project. And the rest of it comes from property tax. Property so, tax and the oil impact. Yeah, we'll I, let's just use this for an instance. If we took over the road, if we could take it over and then just get it in shape once, just get it in shape once with some other fund somehow, then to maintain it, you know, it's not that. Biggest strain on the county budget then, the 1.4 miles, you know, along with eight. We did 11 miles east of Webster, is that what it is? 10, 10. You know. For 1.2. Well, if you guys take it over, we'd be willing to help you do it. <laughs> the taxpayers have to agree with all that. You know. I, I'm not saying it's impossible to take it over, but we got to find out the legalities. We have to have a state attorney look into that. As far as what the county has to do to take that over, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. You know, if you got, you know, if that that would be, yeah, that's the ultimate goal. Getting there, I, I still, I don't, I think we could still get, um, you know, between the townships and trying to raise some money privately. I mm -hmm. think we could definitely help out on getting this first overlay done. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't think anything. See, like Adam earlier, he talked mm -hmm. about the home rule charter. I don't know if you guys heard that phrase mentioned, but that's. That's a, well, the ability for the county to collect sales tax. And, yeah, uh, collect anything but property tax. What are the trade-offs that are made if you get a home rule charter? You craft your own home rule charter dependent upon how you as a county, you, you create a committee to draft the home rule charter and then the people have to vote on it accordingly. Every county's home rule charter, I think there's, what, nine or ten in the state that have home rule. Is there that many? Yeah, it's, it's up in that range. Every county has crafted their home rule charter differently. Some of them took out elected officials, so they became appointed officials. Some of them did it simply because they wanted to put like a half cent sales tax on, like Steel County, I believe, specifically for road usage, for road funds, so they could build their road fund in a different manner. Every county does a little differently. Uh, most of the larger counties are the ones that have a <coughs> but there are some of the smaller ones like Steel. But like Steel, you know, it's the biggest city, Finley. Yeah. So basically rural, you know, people are voting. Here, the rural people would be in favor of a home rural charter. But I can't. The city would, you know, they would never carry the city. Well, and that's where you got to get your votes. So, well, and that's the difficulty of doing it. Yeah, one is, it's, this problem is is akin to a lot of other problems we see. Is that how the county's powers and how it was set up don't match today's needs in a lot of You're situations. Right. Totally right. And and how we tax <coughs> off the property tax don't match today's needs in a lot of situations off of where the actual tax and valuation and where the base is. But we're kind of stuck with our hands tied, sitting here going, we want to help you, but how do we get there? And, and we have to be creative in a lot of different ways because mm -hmm. it, it just isn't structured the way it really honestly should be. I mean, if we had the, you know, the existing infrastructure we have, that we have, you know, it's all based off vague of land basically out there, so it's paved because you've got trucks running across it. Well, other than the houses that are collecting value out there, yeah, there's a ton of economic activity. <coughs> But we don't, as the county, derive any value off of that economic activity. 
Everybody that spends money at the marina or anything out there, that stays there, other than the property tax that's collected. Those people, then, when they drive into town, then, and spend money, Devil's Lake drives all that money. They, they collect all the sales tax. They collect all the lodging tax. If anybody does stay in town and then goes out and uses the marina or whatever, and we don't get a penny of it. So then those dollars should really go to helping a road like this or something like that. But we don't have any way to derive those dollars back out again because we don't have a home rule charter to make it work. Doesn't mean we shouldn't solve the problem. Well, the only thing I was thinking is, not to catch up, we, we, we're going to have some retainment or some under dollars on, like eight, we're coming up $100,000 short. Well, is that all federal dollars though? Or is that no, oil impact dollars? No, you're into your there, Yeah. That, that was in our money then. Are we all out of oil dollars then too? Once this one's complete, yes. Yeah. So we'll be all out then at that point. See, the state isn't handed all the money like they did two years ago. Right. <clears throat> so it's, uh, we have to watch what we do here in the county just on our own needs with the roads we have. But I see your point. I mean, uh, I would hope we get our legislators involved. I think there's an opportunity there. I mean, I'm probably putting them on the spot and they'll probably hit me or slap me or do something else to me. But I think we should help get them to help somebody. Because like I said, if we could get in a county road and get it fixed once, then the maintenance on the road wouldn't be that big a deal. Get that damn black dirt out of there. Yeah. You know, redo the road. Redo it. I agree. I think that would be that simple at least double the cost of what they're talking about. It would bring the cost up immensely, but but it would be fixed right once. Yes. Then you just have to maintain it, and that's what should be done. To keep throwing overlays and stuff on top of it, I don't know. It, it's, yeah, well, the overlay is better than just the patch. I agree with you. But, you know, and that's kind of a, yes. In our reality, what we think, you know, and maybe that's a number we can get to, but, yeah, you know. Yeah, ultimately, it would. I'm sure it's not very well designed at all. Yeah, but the best about. option would be to tear it down and start over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. because it, like you said, like Beth mentioned, it wasn't designed with the concept of 900 vehicles going over it. They just were paving it so they for home usage. Yeah. basically, the people out there. All of a sudden, you got traffic like crazy, and it's a good thing. And, and that's why I look at it as something we should get involved in to the point of it's a greater good issue because. Think of all the wonderful things that happen out there that our community derives value from. Even if we're not getting a penny from it, it's our community still derives value from it. So we've got to find a way to help you. Just a matter of how do we get there. And another thing to keep in mind, it could never be a federal aid road. It would have to be just a county road. We'd never get federal dollars, ever. There's no way to put roads on federal aid. Well, we can tend to have to lead to another federal aid. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. We've got to be connectors. That's why I said let's get the legislators involved and see if we can get the state there. I mean, this is putting a lot of sales tax in their pocket, too. Absolutely. And I don't yeah, care who I tell that to. Yeah, the state's getting 5% so, of the sales that are happening out there, or whatever it would be. So that's a good point. There's no reason that they can't step in and help here a little bit. I'll hold the long haul. Man, I don't care who I tell that to. <laughs> well, maybe it's a situation where you know, we've met with the DOT before on other things. Maybe we need to talk to them. Talk to the yeah, legislators yeah. and see if we can figure out some way to maybe there's a some way we can find a pot of money to help out a little bit. I want to set up three or four meetings because the person is probably going to be a take a hike. No, I think you guys want that. Being said, I thought we were going to get told that out on Highway 2 East. I did too. And you know what? It's going to happen. By God, they're going to take care of it. So sometimes you just got to ask. <laughs> Never hurts to talk to people. I just about got smoke Sunday night out there, right? I had a good day. About 70 mile an hour, I kind of a fast ride down the ditch. That needs to get done. The car was blowing up, turning the lightning, the pickup come up right behind him, and I was next to the car. The speed limit sign on the beach has got knocked over by the damn motor. Yeah. Yeah, let's set one up. Let's try it. Well, I, I think that's, that's our first avenue, is probably talking with. With the state legislators talking with the DOT, seeing if there's any options. And then if they tell us there's no options, then we can go back to our local options. 
Well, and I feel it would be appropriate to whatever body goes and speaks with them to include some members Absolutely. of the town. Yeah, yeah, because so. you guys need to have your voices heard on that level. When you when you built the rebuilt the Woods Rotten Road, that was nothing but a dirt road. That yeah. wasn't a county road. And uh, I mean, you're, I think you're, what you're talking about here, as I understand it, you're dealing with a dirt road and trying to put asphalt on it, and it's just not going to work. Just a prairie trail, though. It is just a prairie trail. All right, let's set up a meeting and let's try to get our legislators in. Just a, a question for, you know, obviously we can't ballpark the dollars perfectly, but say you were going to do a total rebuild. What kind of cost you want in that? Triple that. Triple it? Probably six hundred thousand. Six, seven hundred thousand, probably. That's kind of what I was saying. I'm not sure. Sure, a little higher. Let's, let's get it done right, once. Well, that's my only. Quite, I mean, obviously, we're just at the beginning of this, and we're going to try to go somewhere with it. But we're going to spend the money. Maybe you get it done right. I don't know. Like you said, we didn't think we could get turning lanes out there on Highway Two. That got done. Yeah. Well. Not yet. I know. I know the states. You know they've only got. They've got a finite amount of money too, and it's probably they'll probably have to set the projects already for the next two years. It moves around. Yeah. Get this a little bit. Like I said, you're going to have a lot of sales back off there. Oh, and that would hurt to call and talk to some people. Yeah. See what we can go with it. But you gentlemen and ladies got to uh, come to the meetings too. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Just more, that's for sure. That's that's the secret. We're coming for us. We'll bring them more. We were in the basement. Well, you know, looking at the number of persons, you know, that's a lot of a lot of individuals that can show up. Oh, uh, well, like you said, that's only parcel count. That's not counting. That's not counting all the people that camp there on the weekend and all the people. That, <coughs> I mean, those are essentially residents all summer. I mean, they're out there every weekend. And I don't know how many campers Kyle has out there, and, and you know, Peterson Woods and all that. There's quite a few. If somebody wanted to chase down the sales tax that comes out back to the state out of that township, because well, that would be pretty easy to find out. Kyle's the only one that pays sales tax out there. He could give you the number pretty quick if he's, if he's willing to. I, I just, yeah, let's try that, man. I think, what do you think, Adam? Well, never hurts to find out. One thing to keep in mind, this is a one, two, maybe three year project. Um, don't get your hopes up. It'll get done this year. Put it yeah. that no, 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 but it's, it's good to start now. Because We're probably looking at the next legislative session to get the money appropriated. You know, that's well, th this has been an ongoing thing. You guys have been in and sitting in these chairs before and talking to us. Yeah. A couple of years ago, and we mm -hmm. talked about the same thing and how we're going to handle this, you know. And the lake is a fantastic thing, but it pre you know presents problems. <laughs> you know, it's presented a lot of problems over the years, but I think this is one of the smaller ones we can figure it out. We'll have to figure it out. You know, the city was out there, and they were getting part of the sales tax. Well, then you know it should be their responsibility for the road, but that's not the case here. Right. Three miles from the city. So. Did did the state pay the full cost of the uh, overall of the uh, Graham's Island Road? Ten percent. That's fine. We the county paid partial. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Well, I was on the commission. It wasn't too long ago. And it, I well, it was five or ten ago. Is that the county had to pick up that? Wasn't it, Kevin? What? Five hundred. Five or ten percent. Well, more than that. We had to pick up, but the county split it. Split it with. there was some incentive money. For, mm -hmm. and the Benson got part. We got part. The five or ten percent, whatever it was, that we had to pick up, right? I don't remember that. They yeah. didn't do their site until later on, unless it was another. Yeah, it's agreed. Down to down to that, right? That's oh, a G box. Shared, that's a shared road. Is that what you said? That. Well, I was just asking where the funds came from because to me that's a that's a pretty similar 
state parks, but the county didn't oh, pick up the share. Oh, I'm on the wrong road. So. Yeah, that, that would be my, my guess would be that they pony it up because there's a state park. Yeah, but, well, well, right, but, 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 it, but in terms of the economic activity generated, I mean, yeah, it's not even close. Park. But people do yeah. use the state park. Yeah. 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 We've been out in there. Yeah. Yeah. I was on the road. Ben's an aviator. They had the engineer there, so there might have been yeah. some. Yeah. But as far as the construction, I don't think so. Yeah. Might have been some engineering costs. Well, yeah. well actually, it's. Development in this whole area should be treated no different than the state park at Grange Island. Well, at least in terms of at least in terms of the yeah. Well, no, but at least in terms of the economic activity it generates. You know, I understand why the state would want to save the state park. They make a lot of money out of there. Yeah, public versus private. Right, but at the same time, in terms of the way that it affects, it affects the economics of the lake, it's a very similar situation, at least in my mind. And it'd be a lot cheaper, I think, to do this road than to build up, you know, because that goes over water. I mean, that, that, that was an expensive project. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Not, not, <laughs> not, to, not to mention how much more utilized this road is than that one, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, Legislator, county commissioner, whoever. How many spots you got left? 
we were, we got questions. Yeah. What day is it? 21st. 21st. Alright, so maybe I'll, maybe I'll. Yeah, Adam, I'll pay your pass. Thanks. <laughs> Very nice of you. 8 a.m. leave? Uh, 8.30. Oh. I'll see you there. Yeah. June 21st? June 21st. You're going to leave from here? Leave from here. Well, I, I think we're going to be right around Devil's Lake with a lot of the dike and um, campcraft. And um, afternoon will be out west, the Church's Ferry, BTR, and then Graham's Island on the way in, the new visitor center out there. So. They have a really nice operation out there. That state park is gorgeous. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, and they've got a lot of their work done, and so we're going to stop out there for our afternoon break and let people stretch your legs and, yep, so campcrafting in the morning and then as far as our noon meal and, but a lot of, a lot of the dike has been, through Lakewood hasn't been toured, you know, we're, we've been out there several times but we haven't seen the well, I've always thought that the, the diking situation in Lakewood is kind of fascinating, the way that it's it, it, it's it disconnected is. and behind about, what is it, like three rows of houses? Yeah, and it, the it, it ties in a lot of high ground. So it's it's here, it's there, it's, you know, but it protects the entire community out there. Well, because most of even Jansen's land would be flooded if, if it wasn't yeah. there, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Switch to the waterboard. Didn't have a lot going on today. Uh, just a couple things to report on. Um, the Edmore Cooley uh, petition to create an assessed district um, is in the hands of the citizens. It's, uh, it's their project. It's not our project. And they have uh, the Springs work and spring planning. They haven't done anything yet, but they intend to. And I think I reported a month ago that. Um, we're requiring a $25,000 uh, deposit or bond, I guess would be the better word, uh, stating that um, if the petition vote fails, then the taxpayer's money would you know, be somewhat protected there. According to Bruce Gibbons, that's a common thing. Uh, the other thing we wanted to report was uh, several months ago we sent in, Kevin asked us to send in a stream crossing standards for a uh, Crossing in Overland Township was that on County Road Three? No, it's not on County Road. Different spot. Let me think. There was two. Now I'm trying to think. Um, there was two gentlemen in here. Is it that little bridge? Yeah, over the bridge. John oh, you're talking about yeah, up in uh, Overland or wherever it was. Yes, Martinson. Uh, it was Brett Newgard. Brett Newgard. Yeah. Okay. And we did send that in um, to the state water engineer um, uh, for a stream crossing standards, but we have not heard back from them. I did get an email from them a month or so ago, a month and a half ago, stating that they were uh, uh, hiring a different, some different people and they're a little short staffed. But I just put it on my to do list to email them again to see if we can get that uh, accomplished. And we are also advertising this month for Cattail Spring. It's been our policy to pay um, for maintenance on the established drains and then a private uh, drain or a, a separate tributary, the landowner would, or the farmer would pay for that. So we're going to try to get that in a little earlier than what we usually do in June in the papers versus um, July. Other things, but uh, that's about all I can report today. So. Thank you. Hey, on, on Cattail Corner, I should probably bring you guys up to speed on that. that <clears throat> I don't remember how many years ago it was, but we did a, a when we built that road south of Doyen on the county line. They did a little clean out in that Cattail Corner, and now this this year they wanted to clean it again. Well, they asked me for uh, uh, Ramsey County Highway Department for uh, some funding to help clean that out. And I sent them an email saying that 
It didn't look like it was going to benefit the road. It looked like it was going to benefit the townships more than, or the uh, landowners more than anyone. So unless they could show me how it was going to benefit the county, I wasn't interested to pay for it. So you had someone in this morning? Okay. All right. Um, we had a visitor this morning. Uh, uh, we added him to our agenda, Scott Dimler, who was asking about this cleanup. He's on the Odessa Township. Right. And he stated that you had told him that the water board had an easement. So he brought this easement in. He right. got it from the recorder's office. Bruce right. Gibbons looked at it and said, well, no, the easement is really Ramsey County. So did you allow him to be on your agenda today? He didn't talk, but he wanted me to fill everybody in. Okay. So All right. maybe what did you guys decide this morning? On that? What we decided was it's not our uh, easement. It's a Ramsey County easement. Um, he stated that um, thus far, Nelson County, Illinois Township, and is it Odessa? Yeah. Down there? And Odessa Township are pitching in a little money. The total bill was like $3,600. And that he was hoping that Ramsey County, well, he was asking us, but we don't have an easement. We, don't, we usually don't pay for the maintenance. How about landowners? They were the ones that Pardon me? Are the landowners out to pay for it? In the, in, in the, our general policy is we we have paid for some staking and engineering, but very seldom have we ever paid for any dirt removal. And usually they pass the hat. So um, did the landowners? On this particular project, he didn't state that. He, he stated that there was a tentative offer from one landowner, but we didn't put that in our minutes. So. So anyway, just to keep you up to speed, I don't know what's going to come with it, but... And it's in the second curve south, then? Going north south, it's in the second it's curve? Right by the old fist house. Oh, way down there. Yeah. I thought that all uh, going in the lake. It does. There's probably not much water that well. It ain't much. Even if it's that much, I would be shocked. That much you water. You want to clean out the county road? It's huge. Yeah. They want us to pay for it. They're, they already did the work, didn't they? Didn't work. To my knowledge, the work is done. Work is done, and the bill's like $3,800 or something like that. Before they did the work, because I sent the email saying you know, we weren't interested. Yeah. So they went in the county ditch and did it? Yep. Yeah. That's actually under your control. Uh, that was uh, our side, but uh, Nelson controls that. Yeah. So they made the call. Yeah, I guess. I did. I mean, it was done. You know, it's one of those deals where the landowner benefits more than anyone. He's getting some water off of his land. He's going to farm another few acres. Not a lot. But, you know, at one time this was established as a drain, so they were thinking that as long as it's established as a drain, that somebody else should be responsible for maintenance. That's what they were thinking. We, we deal with a lot of these, and usually people have to have. I don't know how many times they ask you to pitch into the hat, but that's, well, that's not why I'm here to talk. Just, and then when the road is rebuilt, it's redone, uh, the ditch was cleaned out so the water drained away. That's right. Now it's filled in silt. Silt. Less than a foot, I would guess. Well, what, what, do you have what is the easement stage? What's it? I've never seen that on the easement. We've we made a copy of it in Nelson County. It was Nelson County's either, wasn't it? Or was it Ramsey's? I, I think it's Ramsey. I can get you a copy for later over here. I guess you're coming over now, so I'll get you a copy. Yeah. It'd be good to see that, just out of curiosity. Say, Would you mind just grab that copy now? Sure. Do you have a copy machine here, or should I just, just make copies? How many copies, copies would copies. you like? Seven. 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 If you think Nelson went ahead and gave permission to let him clean it up in that copy here. I have to assume. Because we so did. this is right on the county line. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they can. They control. They, they he said we control the west. Well, they control the south. We control the north. Or maintain. Maintain. The north. Yeah. They but maintain. it's but it's on the line between us going north south. Yep. So they right. got the one side. We got the other. Right here. I mean, they do the signing. They do the blading. So you know, we just kind of. Ditch 
ditches and clean them up. Now I'm still liable. Yeah, we have to watch the safety aspect of it, yes. For sure. And this particular one, it didn't it didn't affect the safety any. I mean it's such a gradual ditch and they didn't clean much out. So it won't affect the safety on this one. But I know exactly what you're saying. I'm disappointed Nelson didn't go by us. You know, even though it's you know, probably a minimal effect you know, getting the dirt out of there, but, uh, you know, we're still liable for the west side of that road. Probably in a lawsuit. That yeah. ditch, we would be liable. And I just the center of that road is where the line is. It's not over here. And it's just an agreement that, you know, that we're taking care of the north half and you're taking yep. care of the south half. That's yep. an agreement. It takes no liability away from Rams. Right. It's great to have it cleaned out and all in favor of that and the water away from the road. Assuming, assuming the road is <coughs> not like <laughs> I don't know how many tough ones I've been down that aren't technically, they're, they're not on the line. Uh, they, were, they were built way back, there was no GPS on those things. Well, this was a federal aid road, so I think It should be on the line. So I need to get back to my meeting. I don't think I can contribute anything to this because it's news to us too. So, okay. but I'm, Bruce Gibbons said it's Ramsey County, not the water resources. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jim. So anyway, I don't know if this is going anywhere or not. But the way, right now they're just looking for money from us to help pay for the cleanup. <clears throat> so, who hired the contractor initially? Uh, Dale Fisk. Dale Fisk. And that is the landowner that's the benefit. And unfortunately, when he got the estimate from the contractor, it doubled. The actual final bill doubled. The estimate was 1700 and the bill was 3600 
for the Department of Corrections uh, would be implemented any time the prison is reaching full capacity. And basically, as you can imagine what it is, um, they have full capacity and they give this notice to all of the local jails. They have the right to say we're not taking these people until such and such time. And then they have a priority of you know, your double A most violent offenders who get first priority for a bed versus the A misdemeanor nonviolent offense. What that means is for a particular time frame, the cost of housing somebody would be borne by the counties as opposed to shifting to the Department of Corrections right away. So that's the essential um, impact of that if it does come into play. So I don't know if anybody's heard about that. There were some people there from the Walsh County um, Commission, maybe some other commission members, I'm not really sure, some attorneys, some judges. Um, uh, laws have changed, certain minimum mandatory sentences, drug related ones have decreased, um, the grading of offenses have decreased, medical marijuana comes into play in January of 2018. That's something for all the employers to think about. An HR person could provide good guidance on that. Huh? Huh? Your employee is carrying a well, medical marijuana. I mean, it's in all honesty, it's it might, be, it might, be, it might be something we might have to look at putting in the employee handbook that if you're going to it, do something like medicinal marijuana, you, we have to have notice so we know. Uh, well, it, 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 it will it. impact every employer um, across the board, and I think ultimately it was. I want to say, I don't. I'm not sure if I'm 100, percent but two, two dis, two manufacturing plants in the state eight distributors, and then that'll be a bidding process for those, so I'm not sure how they're going to set it out yet. And I think there's nine or so conditions that a person can have to, and a physician can recommend medical marijuana, they can't prescribe it, because that obviously violates federal law, but it'll be interesting to see how that impacts, I guess. Um, I don't know, been busy, we had yesterday morning we had 46 hearings in three hours, so that was easy, but we had the following Monday was a holiday, but numbers are pretty, pretty steady. Case-wise? Uh, just a question for you, on the justice reinvestment, did they state anything about if there's going to be dollars available for programming? You know, are they going to take some dollars from justice and put it into the local jails for addiction treatment, or anything well, like that, that we can tap? I think that... I know. I, I know I'm asking you a question. I know I probably know the answer to but I think right now that uh, that would be a no, the way things look right now. Like a grant now. program, though, um, where you can start something. Well, I almost wonder if there isn't already some of those through different government, not just state, but federal, which I've been kind of looking at and trying to look at some pre-trial type stuff with certain cases yeah. across the board so that we don't get that X amount per day person sitting in custody to the county, but... Something I've been chewing on in my brain for a while. Well, there's a lot of things you can do. I mean, there's a lot of things that can be done to divert people from straight into corrections. You can look at different programs. There's GPS. There's check-in type systems that can be put into play. I have some... Um, had some initial discussions with some local attorneys to kind of sit down and try and hash out some ideas. Um, you know, is it appropriate for somebody who's nonviolent misdemeanor offense gets picked up, they don't have a set bond for that, so that person goes to, you know, sits in the jail until the judge has a chance to have the bond hearing. You know, they set the bond every day, but they're still sitting there at a cost for the county. Certain cases maybe could be handled differently at the beginning. So, but that's partnership with the attorneys, with the court system, with law enforcement. We have to look at what the practices are now and what they could look like to kind of work on that too. And then the other thing is home confinement. I mean, putting some of the cost back on an offender versus straight custody. So, I mean, there are different things that can be done. But yeah, the county, count local, local people are going to look at different ideas for corrections and for what we want to see happen. And that building you showed me is really painful. Yeah.
it's a fairly painful bill. Yeah. Well, especially you know, we see what happened. You know, his his thought process of why it was so high. Well, all of a sudden it takes that's all it takes is an extra weekend, and all of a sudden the bill jumps an extra fifteen, twenty thousand bucks. I mean. I, I'm just thinking from the aspect of we have low level nonviolent repeat offenders and it's consistent drug problems or consistent yep. behavioral health problems and yep. jail is not the place for them. Jail is to not be. the place for them. Um, at that meeting there are some people from the community that talked about a variety of different things to try and sit down and organize. Yeah, I've been thinking a group. About, yeah, the concept of a working group to start thinking. You have to have housing, you have to have employment, you have to have monitoring, you have to have this, you have to have that. So it's going to take a, a lot of arms. Well, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I've been hashing out the concept of, can, you know, a, a continuum of care where you would have, you know, you would divert them from the jail, you would go to reentry or whatever, plus you would provide services, addiction right. treatment, mental health care, plus that maybe community support of housing would be in there somehow, right. and you could work it all together, but it's going to take a lot of different things coming together correctly and a lot of work, but gotta unless we start beginning. now, how do we get there? Yeah, we got to start somewhere, so, so I've been thinking about it. Extension, I know Bill's been out and about the, the uh, uh, field that we've kind of gone from that worried about too much moisture preventive plant acres to not enough moisture and uh, yeah, if we continue with the, the low precipitation amounts it, it certainly will uh, increase discussion on the drought discussion so um, yeah, I, I guess I haven't had a lot of conversations lately with uh, Sheriff Nelson, but um, that's all I have for for forward. Oh. I'll keep it short. I've been checked out for the last month. Aren't you? <laughs> yeah, no, I haven't been checked out, but uh, I have haven't been able to make a couple of meetings, but. Uh, Everything seems to be going fairly smoothly of what I've talked to. Uh, we have four doubles like tomorrow, executive committee meeting, so I'll uh, probably get some updates on what's going on there with some of the different things we've got going. Uh, I know the chamber just uh, announced their downtown initiative, and I know Forward Devils like has a little bit of an investment in that, about I think five thousand dollars. They're gonna do a study and work with uh, practice strategy group, Mark Schill, I believe, as well as Jonathan Holt. So that would be good. I think that's a good start. Um, I have did, did make the county housing authority meeting last month. Uh, other than that, it's just been busy, busy, busy. Hopefully, I'll get caught up a little bit this next month. Okay. Yeah, my whole portfolio has been pretty quiet. Talked to talked to the recorder and the treasurer, and they're both recording a treasurer meeting, <laughs> uh, as as per usual. And then, as far as all of the boards that I sit on, it's not pretty quiet. Summer reading program. Sorry. Hey. Yeah, I just looked at our memo from Rob Johnson. I'm glad he sent it up so everybody had the answer from him. But uh, I call it a big bill. Yep. What scares me is that uh, the next step could be. Uh, you know, scary. A lot of money to put in incarceration fees. Like Adam said, we need to address mental health, addiction, uh, there's not even a lot of room for us to work on that in this session, in this two year period. So. Well, I, just, I guess I look at it and say, this is what it's costing us. We're going to spend the money one way or the other. Yeah. And it's going to cost money to get it off the You're ground. Right. You're but right. I mean, we're, we're throwing good money after bad, or basically bad money after bad, just putting people, I mean, granted, there's no point need to be there, I realize that. But there's a lot of, I think we could divert a lot of those people that yes. are sitting in there at $75 a day and actually give them the help they need. Right. Help them build but, 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 but it's how do you get there, you know? You know, you know. <clears throat> the fact that common sense has got to kick you in here pretty soon because you only put patches on four tires so long. Right? Yeah. yeah, but I, I pretty think, soon you got to try something to do but, it. But I think what it comes down to is unless we take the lead locally to do it, it's not going to happen. Well, it's the reality. I know. It is real. financial end of it. I, I mean, that's I why I'm saying I think we need to get some kind of a group together and talk about it. I we think there's a group in Fargo that started. You know what? I have written down somewhere it's for justice, like the number four, or justice yeah. four, or something like that. And, and you know, yeah. yeah. We, we need to find a, find a way to tax dollars, grant money, whatever. You know, this, 
Well, and I, and I think that even beyond the you know, incarceration of, of addicts, it's, it's a real problem in this community. You know, 25% uh, last I heard of, of all babies born in Mercy Hospital are born addicted to substances. I mean, this is, this is basically a catastrophe, you know, and, and we should do something within our power to address it. If that's just treating addicts, then that's what it is. But I think there are probably ways we can be more proactive even than that. And I think that I really agree with what you said, Adam, that it would be a good idea to sit down and at least get a conversation started. Oh, yeah, that's the thing. If we don't start now, it's going to just continue to be a problem that we just shake our fist at. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Well, you don't want, you know, one in four youths in this community starting at a disadvantage in life. I mean, that's, that's not fair to, to anybody. No, it's just not good for anybody. It's not good for community building. It's not good for anything. We got a great community, we just gotta get there. The curious said that there's a group in Fargo. Fargo. Yeah. Something to talk about. I'll stop I'll stop it if there's a group in Fargo. I wanna get I wanna get rolling on this because I have way too much time with the auto steer on this bridge. Let's see who is in charge of yeah, in Fargo and see what we can copy along with them. Show me the rig at the wheel. No. Sorry. Let's figure it out. Social service, they've been looking at their new way of funding. Yeah, I should have mentioned that. There's some meetings this month, isn't there, Andy? For them? Yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah, good. I'll have a better yes. idea, I think. Um, Takes over 1st of July, right? Mm, yes. Mm. I think it by end, it takes over. Yep. Oh, that's about wrong by now. Yeah. Let's see. I think it I think it takes over January first because they're they're yes. starting to pay for fiscal year yes. eighteen. Yes. Because we, yeah. we're gonna probably because we have to have that that carryover. Yeah, I find it. Looking like locally we're gonna have to come up with and we've got carryover to use to uh, roll into that, but we're gonna have to come up with some money because the, the initial dollar figure is gonna be short of what we're gonna need. But it's still gonna be better than Oh, where we are, but you know, can you realize they didn't get there? That's kind of mine. Okay. Um, we lost the member of the senior meal. Yeah. Well, did you guys tell that? You were very faithful at getting to the meeting. She was very faithful. She'd been on here since I've been on it. And she was on before that. So, very good. Very good at getting to the meeting. Very conscientious. So, I was sorry to hear that. Basically everything, my portfolios are all pretty quiet. Talk to Candy every day or every couple of days. And she keeps me on top of what's going on. And other than that, it's been pretty quiet. We talk about the jail. The museum is the museum. Everything's good. Summer is summer. Summer is summer. Yeah. Summer. Well, we'll do a turn. Did you do that? <laughs>